Well, thank you for that introduction. In fact, uh, you know, I think after the fourth degree, somebody said I peaked at uh, <laughs> master's level, but uh, I've been there for a while and rode that wave. You know, it is a privilege and honor to be here tonight. It truly is. First, congratulations to all the winners that are here tonight and all the people that helped you get here. To Walt, President Robowski, and all the folks that made this competition what it is today, thank you very much. You know, I've had the opportunity to talk with President Robowski, and I can tell you that the enthusiasm that we have here at UMBC and what you instill in the students here is incredible and it comes from you. Please stand up, Mr. President. Let's give a big round of applause. I, I'm really impressed, uh, and you do. It's great honor to be here. Uh, and I do that so that you'll keep sending students our way. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. I got to NSA six years ago, and I got to admit, you know, I was one of those that say, so, you know, I was really good at math, but what can you use math for? What's all this going to be good for? Boy, I didn't have a clue. You know, the first thing, uh, they took me over to the museum and beat me like a redheaded stepchild. No, that part's not true. <laughs> I made that part up. We went over to the museum, and I had this chance to meet um, Patrick Whedon, who runs the uh, museum and teaches people a little bit about history and taught me an awful lot about history and the National Security Agency and what your forefathers, people who were you know, 50, 60, 100 years ago, they did to save our country and Europe. And that was Enigma. Working with the Poles, your forefathers, and uh, the French, they cracked Enigma and it changed the war in the Atlantic. They cracked the Japanese red and purple codes. It changed the war in the Pacific. And the folks that made it happen were folks like you. They were mathematicians. They were people that knew there were no boundaries. There were no limit to what we could do. You know, and that's where we are in cyberspace today. Think about what's going on in cyberspace. It is incredible. You know, the iPad. In fact, I got an iPhone. I got six messages tonight. I had to go yank back out and forth for work. That part's not incredible. <laughs> that part's bad. But Angry Birds is good. <laughs> you know, and Bejeweled. And being able to read on it and play chess on it. Now, I know you have a great chess club here. It's incredible the amount of things that we can do with these capabilities, it's hugely incredible. We will solve in the next 10 years, based on this equipment, things like cancers and all that. Think how good that will be for our world and it'll be folks like you that do that. They'll come up with designs of equipment that will lead us to solving many of these problems. Tremendous opportunities. And unfortunately, Tremendous vulnerabilities. Now, I'm not going to go in and read all the vulnerabilities out there because there's a lot. What's it take to defend that? What's it take to secure that? What's it take to get them up with that idea? I'm sure, in part, that's what the cyber challenge is all about. It takes the most important thing it takes. Good people. You know, we're looking at the budget cut and we had a chance to sit down with our senior leaders at NSA, and uh, they make me stand at times, but occasionally I get to sit. I have some of them here now, and they, okay, it's okay to sit now. We, we talk to them about, uh, we, have great, we have great computers. We have the neatest stuff in the world. We got so much neat stuff, we can't tell you about it. <laughs> but that's why people who come to NSA, we have the greatest retention. It is. Aliens, we have a few of those. I can't go, can't go into all that. But we have the best computers in the world. We have great stuff. But the thing that if we bulldozed out all of that, we could start it tomorrow. You know what it is? We have great people. Hugely talented. Almost 800 PhDs. And what 
and what you, sir, were talking about, that's what our nation needs. Because in 2008, based on stuff these people did, it helped capture in Iraq over 3,000 bad guys from their technical capabilities and the things they brought to the table. People like you. It saved hundreds and thousands of our troops' lives. And it's doing that today in Afghanistan and around the world stopping terrorist acts. And it's mathematicians, it's computer scientists, it's linguists, it's analysts, it's good people. So we need good people. Our nation needs good people like you. So from my perspective, this is a great opportunity to be here and try to tell you what you could be doing in a few years, saving people's lives, coming up with the future. You just can't tell anybody about it. <laughs> uh, you know, it is kind of interesting. They, they kept the enigma secret, the people at NSA, till 1974, 30 years. Can you imagine that? Keeping a secret that long? You don't have secrets that long. I, I was asking my wife, I was, well, never mind, don't tell me. Uh, okay, so uh, we've been married 37 years. I think there's probably one or two. Uh, no, nothing, okay. Um, so, first, education in science, technology, engineering, and math, the STEM program, is absolutely important. And what you're doing in this area puts you ahead of the rest of the population. We were talking about this a little bit earlier. When you look at the amount of STEM graduates we have in the United States, it will drop to about 4%, 4%. And when you look at other countries like China and uh, um, Germany and Korea, they're in the 40%, 10 times that. And they've got more people. We've got to turn that around. So here's the advice that I would give you as you're going through this. Some of you are gonna get in there and science and math at times I've heard could be hard. I never saw that, you know, it was pretty straightforward, it was linear. Oh, that's a joke, that's a math joke. <laughs> we'll come back to that. <laughs> it was, and never give up. Because what you can do in this field is incredible. And I think it's something that you will truly enjoy. You know, and people, people want to call it geeks. When I look at our population, I'll tell you, there are no geeks there. They are tremendous people. They are educational athletes. They're the chess masters of the future. They're the people that will help make this country, keep this country as great as it is. They're the ones that will discover, you are the ones that will discover the next generation iPads, the next generation iPhones, Android, Google. Think about all that stuff. And then think about how great it was that our country made all that. Now, what can we do to improve it? We're the country that created that stuff. We ought to be the ones to secure it. And so in cybersecurity, taking that next step is huge. And so when you look out what you could do, my first advice to all of you, stay the course. Yep, there are gonna be some courses that are hard. I can remember quantum mechanics. And the first time we went through it, you know, talking about the grades in the physics class, there was a Turkish student with me there and he said, I think I did really good. And I said, what'd you get? He said, I got a 17. <laughs> we never wrote our parents on these scores, by the way. So please, don't go home. Uh, you know, and a 26 was the top of the class. This is out of 100. So the tests were somewhat hard. <laughs> they might have graded it hard, but they did a, a curve. This curve. So, yeah, <laughs> thank God for the curve. <laughs> I'd still be there. <laughs> so from, from my perspective, when I look out at all of you folks, I, I would just tell you how incredibly proud I am, one, to be partners with UMBC and SAIC in making this event, helping make this event occur. How proud NSA is and Cyber Command is to be in Maryland here with all of you, helping to create the Silicon Valley of the East Coast 
because I think what you are, what this is, is the future of our cyber for our nation. And we can and will make a difference. And it only, it starts with only one thing, great people. And tonight, we're gonna get the opportunity to give awards out to a bunch of great people. So thank you. Thank you for the honor of being here, Mr. President. I never got to introduce the president before, so this is a great, thank you. And thank you folks for here. Congratulations again to all the winners. Thank you folks.